The Cube at EMC World 2014 is brought to you by EMC. Redefine. VCE. Innovating the world's first converged infrastructure solution for private cloud computing. Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. Hello, welcome back. We are on the Cube. We're at EMC World 2014 in lovely Las Vegas. Uh, we've got two cubes at EMC World this year, so we've got double the pleasure, double the fun, double the insight, double the guests. So we're excited to be uh, here for our fifth year talking to uh, the EMC execs and partners, but really what we get most excited about is talking to the customers, talking to the practitioners who are taking all this technology that everybody's talking about in the keynotes and implementing it on the ground with their companies, delivering value for their teams, delivering value for their companies. So we're joined by our next guest here, Dan Allensworth, Coach Technology Services, Johnsonville Sausage. So Dan, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, so, good to be here. Yeah, love to have you. So, I don't know if anyone noticed, we were joking before we came online that uh, Dan was right next to uh, to our guest from the Vatican. So we, uh, I think we covered the bases here at the show from, from the Vatican to, to uh, Sheboygan, right? Yep. Close to Sheboygan. So it's terrific. So let's jump into it. So tell us okay. a little bit about, uh, I think we probably all know what uh, Johnsonville Sausage is, but give us a little background on the company, size of the company, history. Sure, sure. Johnsonville is a privately held company. Uh, we've been around since uh, 1945. Um, we have six major operating facilities in the U.S. We're uh, all 50 states and uh, 30 countries around the world for distribution. So uh, four out of every five brats you buy in the U.S. are a Johnsonville brat. So we're uh, pretty proud of that. Excellent. And so how long have you been with them? I've been with them 15 years. 15 years. So the first thing that struck me when I was putting the schedule together <laughs> is your title. Yeah, the coach. The coach. So talk yes. a little bit about the title. It's a, it's so, a unique uh, it's a unique title. Obviously, there's a story there. Oh, absolutely. Um, at our company, it's a very teams based approach. So um, other companies, you have you know managers or directors and employees. At Johnsonville, it's a little bit different. So I coach a team of members. Um, those members include you know our service desk, PC support, networking servers, et cetera, all the, all the sort of technical things you can break with a hammer, but we're coaches and members, not, uh, not managers and employees. And is that a historical precedent that comes down from the company? Oh yeah, or that, that, that uh, comes down right from the top from the owner. That's uh, definitely his, uh, his, his approach and philosophy, yes. Okay, well let's, so let's jump into the IT shop that you're running or coaching. Mm -hmm. So how big is it? What type of systems do you have in place? Why are you here at EMC World? Uh, we're here at EMC World because obviously we run a lot of EMC products. Um, specifically, uh, very recently we've started doing um, SAP HANA products uh, on EMC VNX storage and Cisco UCS. Um, that's really uh, the reason we came out here is to get, me personally, to get more information uh, on where those products are going. There was actually a, uh, a great presentation today where they're going to start doing virtualization on top of the HANA appliances. So we're really excited about that. That's uh, definitely going to give us some future directions uh, for growth at Johnsonville. Because like you say, you're running, what, six plants? Yes, six facilities, and obviously you've got all the other things that are related to reporting and pricing and analytics and so forth that uh, HANA is uh, very important to so for our future. And and really, it's it's, you know, we're an SAP shop. We've always been running SAP and that's kind of SAP's direction for HANA is, uh, you know, their future. So right. we're kind of bought all in at this point. <laughs> and you're getting some, so have you talked to any other practitioners too while you've been here at the show? Absolutely, we've looked at uh, all kinds of stuff. We use data domain extensively uh, in our environment. We use the new Extreme IO uh, for our BDI environment, which uh, we just love, by the way. Um, it's a fantastic product. And uh, we've been getting a lot more information about um, the uh, networker, the Avamar setups, things like that, that we really haven't jumped into those yet, but we're, you know, you've got a, EMC's got a very broad uh, swath of products, and it takes a lot of education to really understand how we can take our business goals and, you know, make those uh, acceptable by, 
on EMC products. So it's been a it's been a real learning experience this yeah. week for me. With a relatively small team. Yeah, absolutely. We're around uh, 14 for the whole team, and I brought two other folks out here with me um, to this conference. So. so talk a little bit about you know kind of your move to virtualization and virtualized <laughs> environments and why virtualized HANA is important and what that's going to enable you to do that you can't do now. Oh, sure. Um, so the real essence of HANA prior to today was you bought an appliance, we bought the starter appliance, which they call like a two plus one, so two blades plus a standby. And that's a pretty rigid environment. And I understand why SAP did it. They wanted to make sure that, you know, when you run the environment, it's gonna be a controlled, good experience for the customer. But the problem with that is, is as you scale into more modules, and we wanted to add all kinds of new modules and features, then you have to keep adding blades and you have to keep scaling it out and the price gets pretty pretty significant. Well, when you go to virtualize that scenario, then you're running multiple guests on the same hardware, you can size them down to what your actual database sizes are, not to what your blades are, and um, you can cut costs significantly. On top of that, you start to do things like um, SRM or replication to a cold side and can bring the system back up. Uh, in a DR scenario, it, it really, uh, you know, VMware really adds to the value of, uh, or lowers the cost, I would say, of running HANA. And are you moving more and more of your apps to the, to the virtualized environment? Yes, uh, actually, um, prior to going to HANA, we were all SAP, both application servers and SQL database servers, all running virtualized under VMware. Excellent. And do you do a lot of your own in-house uh, application development? That we don't do a lot of. We're mostly uh, SAP, you know, implement the modules. If you, if you can put three letters together, it's probably an SAP module and we're probably <laughs> running it, you know? Um, when you look even just at the, uh, at the HANA modules we're looking at, so, you know, business warehouse, you know, business planning and uh, control, uh, you know, um, DSM or, um, running scan data, things like that. It's uh, even just in the HANA appliance itself, it's it's a lot of uh, reporting and data. Okay, so we, we go to a lot of shows, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of big mega trends out there, uh, and I'm curious how they're affecting you. Big mega trends, obviously, virtualization and cloud, we already talked about that. Mm -hmm. The other one is big data, uh, right? It's, How's that impacting your business? Are you collecting new sources of data? Are you leveraging data in new ways? Get your Absolutely. take on that. And then the other one obviously is BYOD, right? And mobile and moving applications, you know, from dedicated specialized devices to, you know, iOS devices or Android devices and or supporting <coughs> other types of applications in the field. So I wonder if you could touch base both on the big data trend and how that's impacting your business and what you're up to, uh, as well as potentially IOD. Sure, so, um, excuse me. <laughs> no problem. So, um, from a big data standpoint, that's really the idea behind HANA. Um, that's, you know, like I said maybe earlier, is that SAP's direction is to put everything under HANA long term. So then that pretty much makes it our direction as well. But in the short term, our quick wins were all around big data solutions. So taking, um, for uh, DSM, for example, we're taking our scan data from customers we're tying that in to price and promotions, and we're actually going to be able to get predictive on what are the best promotions, you know, things like price elasticity, and instead of taking, you know, history data and reports from the past and trying to guess at the future, we're actually going to have almost real-time data, and in essence, be much better at predicting what future outcomes will be. Um, on the BYO front. Um, HANA also helps us out there quite a bit because I would say a shortcoming of traditional SAP is the ability to take and embed analytics into the various modules and applications. But when you add HANA on top of it, now you can start embedding real time into these applications analytical functionality for the end user, which that translates right away to um, iPads running, dashboards with all of this reporting information for the, you know, for whoever needs it. Um, and, I, you know, that's one of our big, uh, our big initiatives right now is the whole uh, BYOD, um, bring your own device, be that a PC, be that a tablet, be that a phone, 
load your SAP applications, pull down your analytical data, pull down your dashboards, make decisions faster, make decisions better. That's, you know, that's our way of trying to support the business goals. Right, right. And how much of that's kind of on the factory floor uh, versus kind of in the management suite in mm -hmm. terms of, of that kind of dashboarding and, and access? That's, that's an interesting question. There's a lot of it actually in both. So there's a lot of it on the, on the factory floor. There's also a lot of it in you know, what we're doing more like predictive sales and, and promotions. We're doing all of the sort of sales, promotions, and the financial sides now. Um, that factory floor piece, we really want to get to, and that's why the virtualization piece is so exciting, because until we have a good um, ability to recover in a true disaster, those like things like the main ECC um, or you know plant PM, things that keep the plant floor running, they're going to be a little cautious about right. putting those on HANA. Yeah, interesting. So I'm jumping all over the place. I'm curious, you said right. on your connection with, um, you know, getting data from from the grocery stores and other customers. Mm -hmm. How tightly integrated are your systems with with their systems? And how, and how tight are you in terms of a direct relationship with, you know, the people that eat the, that eat the uh, the sausages versus mm -hmm. you know the grocery stores and the and the retail chains? So um, you go through intermediaries to get that information. So like Nielsen, okay. scan data, then we uh, reach agreements with them to load that data into our system. Okay, so you're so going it's to very close. Okay. Yeah, okay. it's very close in that sense. And then, are, but are you trying to establish a more direct relationship with clients as well in terms of just your own branding and marketing uh, types of promotions? Absolutely, on the promotion side, we are, but when you talk about predictive analytics, that's getting real-time data on the customers as they buy the products. And we pull all of that data in through third party. Okay. So what's next for you? What uh, What's next on the horizon? Next uh, mound, hill, you know, to, hill to climb, we kind of We kind of already talked about it a little bit. It's really the whole virtualization piece, right? Continuing because, that piece. Because if we can do the virtualization piece and we can get to where we have a, a good scenario for quickly recovering from things like a disaster, then you get to where you're doing more on the production floor and you're doing more of those critical applications to uh, manufacturing. And uh, you get to where you do things like your main ECC database, uh, you know, put that on HANA as well. Um, What's so that's, ECC? That's our main production SAP, so that's okay. the full functional prime, primary module of okay. SAP. So keeps everything moving. Yes, so there are, cer there are certain pieces, you know, that you can run that are reporting based that essentially don't, uh, they don't cause you issues if they're down, right? Right, they're, right. It's, it's, it's nice to have them running and available, but we're still making brats if that disappears. Right. So that's a key component of our <laughs> So what's your, so the brats your favorite sausage or? Uh... Oh, <laughs> I, you know, I like the Irish or garlic. Okay, so, I'm kind of an yeah. Italian guy. I never like yeah. that. I never like the apple chicken thing. I, that was not, not, uh, not well, my favorite. Well, but, we're, we're, but one in, we're one in every three Italian in the U.S. Too. Is that we're right? Big, big Italian. Awesome. Well, Dan, thanks for coming on. Thank you. Appreciate you joining the Cube. So yeah. again, we like to go out we like to get the guys on that are down in the trenches that are implementing this technology that are trying to change the world and deliver a better broad. We've talked to people at the hospitals, we've talked to people flying jet planes, so this stuff is real, it's being used, and we're excited to talk to practitioners. You can learn from one another and really share best practices. So again, we're at uh, EMC World 2014. You're on theCUBE. I'm Jeff Frick. We'll be right back after this short break. Thanks for watching. <laughs>